delicious juicy turkey, gorgeous gravy, and a really scrumptious stuffing. Come on, look at this. The Christmas turkey. What's better, right? Once a year, you come together with this mighty bird. So, just let it come to room temperature for about an hour and a half. Why? If you take a bird from the fridge, cold, to the oven, hot, it's just gonna tighten up. We want juicy, succulent, gorgeous, golden turkey. Now, one of the ways to amp up flavor here is the stuffing. That's the first job that I wanna do. But I'm also gonna give you the choice to make it veggie or meat stuffing so you can please everyone. And this is something you definitely wanna do the day before Christmas. So you can take all that stress away, you can guarantee flavor, and you can just make everything fall into place in the most beautiful way. I am gonna use a food processor because it's really convenient, saves me time. Six regular onions, just peeled, quartered, and a little pinch of salt and pepper, just to get that seasoning in there. And I'll whiz that up. Always do this prep. The day before Christmas, I would never do it on Christmas Day, because that's just gonna bring too much stress. So, let's get this cooking. Put a little swig of olive oil in, and a nice, generous two tablespoons of butter. I know that seems like a lot, but this is gonna make a lot of stuffing. Let that bubble away, then it will be crying out for some herb, for some flavor. You could use any herb, but the herb of Christmas is sage. A nice big handful. Sage absolutely loves butter. Nutmeg, it's an incredible spice. Just half a nutmeg into that frying sage and butter is an amazing start to a stuffing. One of the big flavors of Christmas. And you'll see nutmeg across desserts and sweets and mince pies and mulled wine. It's a beautiful thing. Then we put our onions in. And one of the most powerful ingredients right now is thyme. 15 to 20 minutes of just kind of giving it love, you know, mixing it around. But we've got more little pops of flavor going in there when that's nice and golden. These have had about 15 minutes. The color is getting lightly golden and we're gonna go even more golden, but let's add more Christmassy flavor. Cranberries, they're sweet, they're sour, the color is amazing. This is 100 grams, that is gonna work so well. So just toss that around. Those cranberries will rehydrate with the moisture from the onions. And you're gonna get those pops of color as well. Another very Christmassy flavor is chestnuts. And all I do is just lightly crush those into the stuffing. Nutmeg, sage, butter, onions, cranberries, chestnuts. Super Christmassy flavors, lots of texture, lots of color. And another little curveball flavor that I love is dried apple. Yes, you could chop up fresh apple or even pears, right? But dried apple is so intense and sweet and gorgeous. And when you get a little pop of that in your stuffing, with your turkey, it's so good. Festive roasted meats served with sweet and sour fruits is an absolute classic. We give it a nice season with black pepper and sea salt. You can be quite generous. The classic clementine. Just take a fine grater and just grate that zest. Not the white part, just the orange part. Normally we use the juice, but actually there's a lot of flavor in the skin, in the zest. And look, if you want to swap out different fruits, you can, different herbs, you can. Absolutely brilliant. But this is the principle to really making something truly phenomenal. There's stuffings and there's stuffings. And that is going to be really, really awesome. We're going to finish this part of the story by adding one last thing that's wet. Cider. I think cider, apples and turkey is a thing of beauty. About 300 mils. Just let that just cook away. Of course, you could use wine, whiskey, port, whatever you want. So cook that cider away. Very important, whenever you're making a stuffing, let it cool down before you stuff the meat in question. So I'm gonna speed that up by putting it outside. Obviously, make sure there's no little friends out there. Conquer, that includes you. Next up, breadcrumbs. 
You can use any bread you want. Now, 800 grams, breadcrumbs. Breadcrumbs are a fantastic way of taking something that's often wasted and using it to stretch a dish. Once cool, mix in these beautiful onions and flavour and really scrunch and mix all of those flavours together. I want you to really have choices and options, so I'll divide off half of this and that will be a veggie option stuffing, right? Take a little bunting and just rub this with a little oil. Not only can we have a nice veggie stuffing, but we can make it look really spectacular and super Christmassy. And then I'll take half of it and I'll put that in there like that. Now, if you wanted to, you could make little veggie stuffing balls. What's great is you can continue to have fun about how you serve it. OK, so with this other half of stuffing, I'm going to add now the minced sausage meat. It's a kilo. Try and get yourself the best quality sausage meat you can get. You've got a nice mixture of fat and meat in there, and you've got some basic seasonings as well. Now, you've got a few choices. Do you stuff the bird? Do you stuff the cavity? Do you make it into, like, a meatloaf? Everyone likes things slightly differently. So, take two-thirds of that, roughly, give or take, and just pop that into an oven-proof bowl. Nick one of these little clementines and put half in the top like that and just sink it down, right? And it's just going to cook in there. It's just going to look really festive and gorgeous. I've got this turkey ready and raring to go, so I'm going to take half of this remaining stuffing. So we're stretching the meat, but we're also adding all of that flavour into that neck. And when you stuff it in there like that, can you see how the shape is just beautiful. If I spin it around, you've got this cavity here, not so glamorous. Just patting that stuffing at the bottom of this carcass. What you don't want to do is block up this area, right? You want this airflow when you're cooking this turkey, right? That's how you're going to get a juicy, perfectly cooked turkey. So I'll just pop this here, and then we're going to do the trivet. Now, the trivet holds the turkey off the roasting tray and it is the base also of your gravy. So it's very, very important. Right, I'm going to put some celery on the bottom, just a couple of little sticks like that. I've got carrots, just a couple. Just clank these up, put it into the same tray that I mixed the stuffing, so nothing's going to go to waste. Just big old clunks. Put the clementine in there as well. As that clementine roasts and gets really jammy, that's going to add to this incredible gravy. Just quarter the onions. We're also going to get the giblets. Embrace those giblets. It's the neck of turkey. And with the heel of my knife, just crack it up like that. You've got heart, you've got liver, you've got kidney. This is where you get the flavour. Don't throw this in the bin. That is the basis of a trivet. Giblets, onions, carrots, celery, clanked up. Clementine, and there's a secret ingredient, right? And it's star anise. And one little star anise will cook beautifully in this gravy. It's going to be amazing. Also, just a little piece of cinnamon, just like a little inch. Some rosemary and a bay leaf. I can put my turkey now on top of that rack. One last thing I'm going to do before I cook this turkey is just give it a little drizzle with olive oil and season it with salt and pepper, and just give it a nice little massage all around the cracks and crannies. There is another secret little tip to amp up flavour. I tested it, and it's just it's brilliant. And it's involving a clementine again, one bay leaf, right, and one clove, and use the clove to secure it. Put that in the microwave for a minute and a half until it's boiling hot. Look at that! Steaming hot. You can literally see it bubbling away. I can feel it boiling in my fingers. Now we put this, just before we cook the turkey, into the cavity. So it's going to be hot, fragrant flavour all happening inside that turkey. It's a brilliant little shortcut to flavour. Take some foil and just put it over the turkey breast. Really pack it into the contours and the shape. 
and then just sort of hug it in. I've left the cavity exposed. This is a five and a half kilo bird. It's going to go into the oven at 180 degrees Celsius, which is 350 Fahrenheit, for an hour and a half with the foil on, then an hour with the foil off. Right, in we go. While that's cooking, please click the like button and give us some love. And don't forget to subscribe. Oh, and remember to turn on that notification bell so you know what's happening. Now, back to the recipe. The room smells absolutely incredible. Let's get this bird out and I can show you a few little checks that are very helpful. First of all, you can use a thermometer, get it to the thickest part, leave it there for a while. If you get to 70 degrees, that's a good internal temperature. If you feel that you could rip that meat off the bone very easily, that's a great sign. There's another one you can do, which is if you just get the fork in there and hold this bird up and look at the juices coming out, if they're running clear, that's another great sign. So as we've passed all of those checks, move this to a lovely platter. There is your boiling clementine there in all of its glory. So we're gonna let this turkey rest for one hour and a half. Really important because the force of the heat of the oven has pushed all the moisture into the middle. And when you let it rest, all that moisture comes back. But not only that, it's gonna carry on cooking. So, let's do the gravy. If I angle the tray, you can see how the drippings here and the fat are separating. Pour that fat into a little jam jar, like that. And then when you've really gone down to the drippings, you can just angle it here and use a spoon to catch those extra bits of fat. Pop it in the fridge, start a casserole, soup, stew, and it's gonna be proper flavor. So nothing going to waste. If you look here, we've got a lovely mixture of soft carrots that are cooked and sweet. We've got onions that have caramelized. We've got the clementine here that's nice and jammy. So you can mush all of this up. Take out the bay leaves and the cinnamon stick and the star anise. This is all gonna add to the flavor of the gravy. Get that sizzling. And then there's one more element of flavor that I love, and that is using some wine. One generous glass. You wanna kind of cook away the actual liquid so you're left with the essence, the flavor. And once you've done that, go in with two tablespoons of plain flour and this will thicken it beautifully. At this stage, we're gonna add some stock. Now, if you've got lovely homemade stock, brilliant. If you've made stock from stock cubes, that's absolutely fine. So let this come to the boil. If you want it thinner, add a little bit more water. If you want it thicker, just let it tick away a little bit longer. But this is gonna be beautiful. But first, I'm gonna get this stuff in, in the oven for 45 minutes. This gravy is ready now. It smells absolutely incredible. An important part is putting it through a coarse sieve, right? Coarse sieve means bigger holes, right? Just pour that gravy through. Really use the spoon to push the carrots and the giblets and all of those bits through the sieve. It's raining gravy. Right, time for a try. Oh! That is the most delicious Christmas gravy. So big, so intense. The flavor from the stuffing and the turkey is in there. Jules is gonna go crazy for that. <laughs> that is utterly delicious. There's one stuffing. How beautiful is that? Really nice and crispy. And then we've got our veggie stuffing as well. Put that onto a plate. And there you go. A gorgeous, sizzling, crispy outside. Look at that, it looks brilliant. Finished off with some gorgeous gravy. There you go. Perfectly cooked turkey, ready to be carved. Stuffing in two ways, veggie and non-veggie. And then the best gravy in the world. <laughs>